Welcome to this new video. I recently found this article. This website that I'm actually going to leave in the description of the video because it's not my own work. However, it's in English. And what this person did was compare different browsers for Windows 11, and they came to some conclusions. As you can see, the article is quite long, so if you want, you can go read it. It's really interesting. That's up to each of you. In this video, I'm going to give you a pretty quick summary since, as I mentioned, the article is quite lengthy, but I'll summarize all the information in this video. Basically, what this person does in the article is compare 10 different browsers based on various benchmarks. They ran different tests and calculations using various tools, and these browsers are 100% dedicated to Windows 11. Of course, you can use them on Windows 10 or Mac if you want, but they're all fully available on Windows. So, this person tested these browsers, which are practically the most popular ones under the same conditions and shared the results with us so we can choose what works best for us. In this case, this person used a PC with Windows 11 installed, and on this Windows, they opened 10 common tabs, tabs that you would normally use in your day-to-day -day life, including benchmarking pages, and measured the RAM and CPU usage in this scenario. In other words, the most useful one is the one that uses resources appropriately. Then, this person used a benchmark called Speedometer to measure browsing speed and another program called Browser Audit Benchmark to evaluate security points. As you can see, this person did a lot of things here, and you can see all the rankings to check out the results, but they explain them in detail later. So, let's just say the quick result first. The one that used the least RAM among all of these is actually the one I'm using right now, which is Brave. As we talk about each browser, I'll show you the page so you can come and download the browser, or I'll leave it in the description of the video. This is the Brave page. So, the one that used the least RAM was Brave, with only 546 megabytes for the 10 tabs. As we can see here, Edge used 670 megabytes, Vivaldi 831 megabytes, her browser 836 megabytes, Opera 973 megabytes, Mozilla Firefox 980 megabytes, Opera 1100 megabytes, which is practically like 1.1 gigabytes to 1200 megabytes, and Google Chrome 1840 megabytes. Not surprising, but I thought a vast wouldn't be here, and it turned out to be the one that consumes the most. Now, after this, the surprise was Edge which was using 670 megabytes of RAM but only 4% CPU. So, if we average these two numbers, Brave might use the least RAM, but it's the one that uses the most CPU. So, on one hand, it gives us something, but on the other hand, it takes away. Meanwhile, Edge, if we average these two numbers, would end up winning against all the others, making it the most efficient in terms of resource usage. Then Tor, as we see here, used 1,200 megabytes of RAM and had a CPU usage of 18%, which is huge. Obviously, not to mention Avast, but as we see here, Tor is one of those browsers that people say is great for security, but it doesn't make much sense to use a browser that gives us so much security but takes away our comfort while browsing the internet, which is ultimately what we're constantly looking for. Finally. Regarding speed, Brave got the best score with 206 in this benchmark, meaning it's the fastest for browsing the internet, while the worst of all was Tor with 76. As you can see here, oh sorry to interrupt the video, I wanted to remind you that if you like this kind of content, don't forget to subscribe. Obviously in this case, the higher the score, the better. So Tor ends up being the worst. As for the software used for the security benchmark, it scored 430, and you can actually take this test. As we see here, the best score was Avast, which passed 403 tests, making it the best in terms of security. Now, let's go over the strengths of each of these browsers. 
I'm going to share a general point from what this person has shared. You can read more in the video description about each browser. Let's start with Opera. It offers good speed, battery saving, and a free VPN, but high RAM usage. It's ideal for laptops needing speed and battery efficiency. On desktops, battery saving is less relevant. The free VPN is a plus. Next is Brave, my personal choice. It's fast, resource efficient, and includes an ad blocker for enhanced security. It's highly customizable. Microsoft Edge, once doubted, now performs well with Windows 11 integration. It supports Chrome extensions, enhancing its utility. If you use many Windows tools, Edge complements the ecosystem well. Vivaldi is innovative with workspaces but uses significant RAM and CPU. It's best for advanced users who can utilize its features. Our browser focuses on privacy with a smaller user base, limiting community support. Firefox, a classic, excels in privacy but is slower compared to others. Finally, Opera GX is a browser. Previously, everyone doubted Edge because it came from Internet Explorer, and it was like, how can it compete with Chromium, until they decided to base the browser on Chromium. Now, this browser really has impressive performance and is integrated with Windows 11. That means as soon as you install Windows, Edge comes pre-installed. So, on that front, it's pretty good but it can even have fewer extensions than other browsers. However, we know that Microsoft Edge is compatible with Google Chrome extensions, so that shouldn't be too much of a problem. Also, as I mentioned, since it's native to Windows, if you're someone who uses a lot of Windows 11 tools, this browser is going to be the best for you because you'll be able to complement the whole ecosystem. In the end, that's what it's about, just like iOS. People buy iPads, Macs, Apple Watches, and iPhones because they all fit into that ecosystem and connect one device to another. Microsoft works very similarly, even though they don't have mobile devices anymore. We know what happened with their mobile operating system, but that's another topic. However, certain Windows tools would be very useful, and it's available on Windows, Mac OS, iOS, and Android. Then we have the Valdi. I really like this browser. It's quite innovative. It has workspaces, which I think is super cool, but there's one thing. It claims to have smart resource management, but honestly, this browser is very customizable. You can change just about everything, but it uses a lot of RAM and CPU. So, what it says here, I don't know, personally, I don't think it's that great, and I consider it to be for advanced users. If you're someone who just uses browsers to open a tab, watch videos, and that's it, you might not find it to be a very advanced browser because you really have to dive into all the features to get the most out of it. So, I would say this is for more advanced users to really take advantage of it. Then we have our browser, and it says, finally, a browser that protects your privacy. As you can see, it looks like a pretty old design, like Chrome used to be. This one is focused on privacy, has a good balance of resources, but it has a smaller user base. This matters if you're looking for people who share the same browser, like finding extensions or tips for the browser. For example, I make videos where I share 10 extensions for Google Chrome, 10 extensions for Microsoft Edge, and you won't find that for our browser because there aren't that many people using it. And of course, a classic is Firefox browser. This browser used to compete heavily with Google and was practically its main competitor. It's great for privacy and security and many people use it for that reason. But honestly, it's one of the slowest. If you browse daily with this browser, you might not notice much difference. But personally, when I sometimes use Google Chrome, sometimes Edge, and then switch to Firefox, I do feel a bit of slowness. I don't know if it's because of the animations or how the browser is structured, but I definitely feel some lag. Now we have Opera GX, a browser. Now we have Opera GX, a browser. For gamers, as we see here it says, get an unparalleled browsing and gaming experience on mobile and computer, set limits on CPU, 
RAM and network usage, use Discord and Twitch from the sidebar and connect mobile and desktop browsers with the flow file sharing feature. So this browser, as you can see, is a browser created for gamers and it has an integration for Twitch and Discord and the RAM usage is quite high but we can manage it through the points that they indicate here and there is like a dial, like a little wheel that allows us to establish how much RAM we are going to use, how much CPU, whether to decrease and increase it. Apart from that it has some very characteristic sounds that when you are using it and you click on a section it sounds like it. Sounds one way or another when it opens it is as if the beginning or the intro of a video game were opening. So well, those who are interested in the topic of customization and our gamers will suddenly be quite interested in this browser. Next we have Tor, a browser for the deep web. It's a leader in privacy and anonymity but sacrifices speed and requires more resources. If you like Firefox, you'll find this browser has a similar interface but limits speed and uses more resources. Then we have Google Chrome, the traditional browser. There's no place like Chrome. Before discovering Brave, I used Chrome and wouldn't switch. It's the most popular and compatible. If you want a community backing your browser, this is it. Within the Google community, there are many questions and extensions for Chrome. Then we have the traditional browser, Google Chrome. There's no place like Chrome. Initially, before discovering Brave, I used Chrome and wouldn't switch for anything. I tried many browsers, none convinced me. It's the most popular and compatible. If you want community support, this is it. The Google community has many questions and extensions for Chrome. When new things like ChatGPT come out, the first extension is for Chrome, fully compatible, like websites. Sometimes a site says it's only compatible with Chrome, and you wonder why. I'm on a Chromium browser, yet it wants Chrome. When a page says it's only for Chrome, and you wonder why. I'm on a Chromium browser, yet you want Chrome. It's odd. So, I'm on a Chromium-based browser, and you're still going to ask me to install Chrome. It's kind of weird. So, that has happened to me, and it's kind of annoying that sometimes in Brave, the page doesn't load very well, even when I disable the security shields. And in Chrome, I can just enter the page, and it loads everything right away without any issues. So, compatibility is also something important. However, this browser is hardware-intensive with multiple tabs, meaning when you're browsing and opening a ton of tabs, Get ready because Windows starts to slow down completely. And finally, we have Avast. Secure. We obviously know this one from Avast. So, for those who don't remember, Avast is an antivirus, and that's where this browser came from. And that's why this browser is the safest, but also the most demanding. When it comes to security, we're covered by Avast. But it's also demanding because more processes require more RAM and CPU. Regarding protection, it includes banking protection, of interest to many. If you sacrifice hardware performance for security, this is the best option. And even, as far as protection is concerned, it includes banking protection, which is something that many people are interested in. However, if you're willing to sacrifice some of your hardware and your PC's performance to optimize your security, then this would practically be the best option. So, to wrap up all these browsers we've been discussing today, Brave wins in performance and speed, while a vast secure browser dominated security. Edge surprised by being fast and efficient in Windows 11. Secure browser, which we just looked at, dominated in security. Then Edge turned out to be a big surprise, being fast and efficient when integrated into Windows 11. And that would be my top three. If you have any other points, just leave them in the comments section. I hope you liked this comparison and please go and give some love to that article we saw a moment ago because it really deserves it. It's a shame that it's obviously in English, but here I translated it for you in a way. So to speak, I tried to do my best. So with that said, leave a rocket emoji, a plane emoji, or something similar in the comments to reflect that we need a browser that helps us fly through the internet. For me personally, it's brave, but I don't know about you. See you next time. Bye bye. See you next time. Bye bye. <laughs>